everybody welcome back to my channel made with love my name is Heather and today I am going to be making some gnomes I was watching YouTube and I was watching all these cute little bath time gnomes and I actually have this little bathtub it's a little dirty sitting in my bathroom with all the bath products from a couple Christmases ago that my husband got me something I just did so I thought I dropped something I just did I dropped the foot off of these uh, these, this one here has got the removable feet. I really like the detail of the claw feet. And I wasn't sure what I was going to do, how I was going to paint these gold and paint the tub just a different color. I don't really like the this gold that's on here. I, you know, I was flipping it over and mine actually screw off, so I was starting to take those off. I'm also just looking for other ways to make gnomes and their bodies with clothing without using socks and rice and beans as fillers. So I found a few and these other ones I was watching, they use um, pool noodles as the base for the body. So I'll be doing that. Uh, while I was doing this, I was trying to figure out, you know, be a cute little girl gnome in her bath. And I was in my bathroom and I've got some of these old, these are the old bath pillows. This one was actually heading out to the garbage it would have gone last week but it got missed in the bin so luckily you know sometimes it's good you forget to take garbage out sometimes uh, I cut it in half and so I didn't know what these were full with this is actually got this nice piece of this yellow foam so I'm gonna save this for another project I think, uh, it makes I think that's a perfect size for like a doll bed which I'd like to make a, a little doll bed one time I haven't done that for a long time what I did like about this is once I got that out, it's still all this material or material, I don't know, it feels like the shelf liner or the stuff you put under your carpet so they don't slide. But it has the little um, suction cups. So I would just cut one down to the, about this size. So I keep the little suction cup and I kept the finished edge going along two of them. It was the best way. So then when I get all this done, I can give her a cute little bath uh, pillow. It looks something like that. So from the back, and once I get set it up and glued in, it will start, it will look a lot better. And then you get this cute little uh, the bath pillow. So I'm just going to go and finish taking this apart and I'm going to spray paint it. So I'm going to do the feet uh, a really bright gold or as bright of gold as I've got. And as for the bathtub part, I I have this really nice, it's a vintage bluey green, like a mint blue green. I forget the color, uh, but I'll let you know when I'm doing that. And then just to decorate the tub, I have a whole bunch of these little beads or table scatters shaped like flowers. I do like the color of these. So I probably am not going to paint the flowers yet. I'll just see what it looks like when I get the tub painted, if I like that, or if I prefer to paint these white. So I haven't fully decided. And then I just, uh, I'm going to work on the bathtub uh, part, and then I'll be making my gnome. Now, for because she's going to be in the tub, I don't have to make a body. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what to do to, for her feet sticking out. I haven't quite decided how to do that. Um, but So I'll be figuring that out as I'm working on the next step. But I was watching all these other YouTube channels trying to figure out how to do the gnomes, like a nicer way of doing gnomes. Like I have the ones I have been making. Like these ones, I really like these ones here. This is the one with the sock with the uh, styrofoam cones and then the shoes I made. But I'm trying to find other ways to make my gnomes. So today I'm gonna try to do it with the, so it was the pool noodle body. So it'll probably be a two-part video. One will be doing the bathtub, and the second will be actually doing the actual gnome. Because I don't think I have all the supplies right at the moment to make my gnome's body. I have to check and see what we have for, for fabric to cover the pool noodle. I had a couple ideas, and I just I was not able to find the material I thought I had. But I'll be right back, so I'm going to go and uh, spray these. I'm going to spray the bathtub. So I will be back when I've got the bathtub all sprayed and dried and we're ready for the next step. Okay, well I went outside to paint and as soon as I got out there it started to rain. We've got some thunder happening now. So painting this at the moment has been put on hold. But when I went through my paint I realized I don't have any gold spray paint left. But I do have my 
Folk Art Metallic Pure Gold. So I'm going to paint these by hand. So that's okay if it's raining outside now because it's going to, the feet are going to take longer to dry anyways. Let's find the right paintbrush. So use this one. I'm just going to lower this down. You can see it. I'm just going to just paint each one of the feet. Now it's going to take quite a few coats. I don't even know if this is even going to cover. I don't know what kind of plastics type stuff this feet is. We'll definitely take two coats. But right now I'm really getting this old antique look like where some of this stuff is coming off. Interesting look. I'm just going to keep painting the feet. One that's not painted next to the one that is painted. The painted one is more of the detail has come out. But I really want to get rid of that fake kind of goldish color that's on here. And I really want this better color. I'm just going to see. Does this not work on plastic? Uh, it doesn't say if it works on plastic or not. So I'm just going to just get more paint on the brush and just add more paint. Here, it's starting to work better. I think I just have to go a little slower in smaller brush strokes just to keep the paint to stick to it. So I think maybe once I get one coat on, I'll probably be able to go and do the second coat. The second coat should cover a lot better. Yeah, if I get more paint on the brush and a smaller strokes, it's, it's working a lot better. I'm just going to do that to all four of the feet. That's it. I'll be back when I get the feet painted and I get the tub part all painted. Then I'll be back with the next step. Okay, welcome back. This will be, I guess, part two of my bath time gnome. Uh, it was it's raining, so I can't do my tub, but I've got the feet off. They're behind me. I've already painted them in the Folk Art Metallic Pure Gold, and I did go over top with my Deco Art uh, Metallic Splendid Gold. Just a combination of those two, so I kind of get that antique brass look. So I'm going to be spray painting this. You know, I've got some thunder and lightning happening right now. I'm going to be spray painting this with the Rust-Oleum two times in the color uh, Ocean Mist. So it's a very nice, like that, like a, a vintage bluey green. And then this is her little uh, pillow. It's just an old bath pillow I had. It had a little suction cup, so I can just place it on there. So I'm just waiting for the rain to stop so I can go outside and paint that want that to knock everything off. So for the body I'm going to use a pool noodle. This noodle measures about I think it was three inches. Well, just a little over just a little over the three inch but basically three inches and I've cut mine to uh, just under five. I thought it was at five. Let's see. At the tallest point it's at five. It's kind of not cut perfectly straight. For it to go into the tub just to give like where she would be sitting. I might actually cut one just a little bit bigger. I'm just going to measure the, the length of this tub in here just so I know. Let me get down to, so we get to the inches. So it's about nine inches. Yeah, so I'm thinking this in here is sticking like that. Yeah, I think I'm going to cut one a little bit bigger. Okay, so it's pulling a little behind me, so I'm just going to measure this. I want to do a little bit bigger, so maybe I'll do seven. So I'll just go to about the seven. That'll probably give me a, a little bit better size to fit in that tub, because it ain't, because the way the tub angles down. Do a starting marks here. Cut around.
leave it a little longer so I can get in there further. There was like a, a significant height difference. I'm just gonna check this and see if that will work a lot better just because the way it angles in here. Yeah, see it fits in there a lot better. Probably make it a little bit shorter now, but I just wanted something that would fit in a little bit easier. So I think I'll just get this whole noodle out of my way. These are these extra long ones. So I'll trim this down just a little bit shorter, but obviously I need it a little bit bigger than this one. So what I said to do for her is I've got one of these old um, bath um, head wrap things. I'm just going to make her a little, so I already cut it, so I cut this good chunk off here and I cut the little bottom so I got the actual little hook. I'm just going to figure out where on her head it's going to go. I'm just going to wrap it around behind here. And just twist it around to the front, like that. And I've got this part here, so I'm just gonna clip this back on through the button. Here, it just angles down so you can see. I'm just gonna put the loop back through there. And this will be attached under here, and then I'll just attach this to here. And then she's got her her head part. I'll do it a lot better when I've got when I when I get this uh, attached. So that'll be her top part of her. Just move this up like that. So that'll be the top of her. So when she's sitting in the tub, oh, she's got her head her hair all wrapped up like that. And then I decided for the bubble part. I'll just, I'll just leave her in here for a second. For the bubble part, I've got some of this, um, this um, sheet of, this was from Christmas. So this is that um, uh, skirt liner that I was using for Christmas or the fake snow. So I thought this would work good. Just kind of like wrap it around, you know, kind of tuck it in, kind of have it looking like she's in a nice, a nice big foam bubble bath. Obviously the blue will show up through here, so I'll be covering this with something with another piece of material. And of course this I can already tell is too wide. I'll probably cut this in half just so it can, can sit back a little further. So that is what I'm going to be working on. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. I'm just going to take this part here off and I just need to measure. So, so she's about seven inches. I'm just gonna and then the diameter around. So this was diameter of the pool noodle is about ten and a half inches around. So I need a piece of this. Gotta find. That's almost 12, so I guess I'll just use this one chunk of square here. So the seven, okay. I've got this nice cutting mat, and I always forget I have it. It sits right here. I don't really use it as a cutting mat. I actually just use it as the t uh, top, so, I t so you don't see uh, through because this is a clear glass table. Up a little bit. I'm just going to line this up there. I'm just going to cut right across here. I don't know if that did anything. I just take my scissors and just cut straight across.
don't want to wrap it like that. I kind of want to keep it so it's all light and fluffy so that when it's in here, when she's in here, and this would be all the bubbles that's all around her. I'm get all the nice bubbles tucked in. I kind of want to have it so it's... I guess the first thing I do have to do is I do have to cut this in half. Yeah, see now I can angle it a lot better in the tub. And I said now when I put this in, this can just be all like that. And of course I have to make it look like it's foam bubbles and stuff. So I'll be playing around with that. So I guess the first thing I'll do is I'm just gonna glue this on. My glue gun's not even plugged in again. It'll be a few minutes for the glue gun to heat up now. So I have to figure out, let's see how far up. Because she is a gnome, and so I mean, male gnomes, you put a beard on. With her, she's not going to have the beard. She's going to have that hat. And I'm going to do, well, her hair's going to be up in. Do girl gnomes have beards? I don't know. I have never made my girl gnomes with beards because I've always had the hats and I've given them uh, pigtails. Okay, well, I'm just going to play around with this for a couple more minutes while my glue gun heats up. Oops. Just about cut myself a few exacto knife. Oops, I'm just going to... All my stuff is falling because i got crafts behind me I've been working on. Let's see. I'm gonna get this. Let's see if I double this. Let's see if it looks like foam and bubbles. of strings left on from my project from yesterday. It's not quite ready. So I'm just gonna do the first little one just so I kind of know where I kind of want it to be. like that and I'm just gonna glue this all around kind of like that to where her body for her hat would be and then I've got the wooden beads where they go here so I can figure out what size of the bead I want to give her that's 
the largest ones I have. I thought I had larger ones, but I think I've used all my larger beads up on my different gnomes I've made. Got the larger ones in the darker color. I really like the lighter color for the girl gnomes. So I can give her a dark one. I think I'm going to go with the lighter colored nose. If you didn't have the wooden beads, I'll show you. I do also have the plastic um, pony beads. They make good gnome noses too. Actually, I might just give her a cute little pink nose. Maybe a little bit darker pink. But this little bit darker pink nose. I think I'm going to give her this little darker pink nose so her nose will show up. So I'll just use that one. I'll put these beads away. Okay. Let's see this big blob of glue right there. Just gonna put the first little bit of this there. I'm just gonna glue up along here kind of kind of like doing like a bunching it like um I don't know what it's called where you bunch it like when you're stitching you kind of like you bunch it up so you get that oh the pleated look so you're gonna kind of stitch it or when you're sewing it's the pleat so I'm gonna kind of glue it Kind of gets this little bit of a pleated look, and the water and bubbles are not just flat straight across her. Kind of looks like a pleated skirt. Oh, it's gonna, oops. Yeah, this doesn't want to stick. I know the glue is melting the foam, so it's not sticking. So it just needs a little more glue. Just gotta hold it down a little longer. And I'm just kind of pulling it up over top just a little. Just to... So it doesn't look like it's kind of pleated, so it kind of just gives that little more puffy. I, guess, I don't know if you can see, but I kind of where I hit the first glue line, I'm just kind of pulled it up and over a little bit. Take this, this is a long piece. 
This is the hat piece. I'm just going to set that aside to let that kind of dry a little more. Oh, this is the hat piece. So these little, little things that get stuck to this type of material. So I'm just going to fold it inside out. And I'm just going to put a line of glue just across here just so I can kind of seal. So it kind of like makes like a hat. So push that together. Just making sure that it's got some at the end here. Somewhere in my craft room, I have the little bag of the little glue fingertips. And I have used them, and they are really handy, especially when you're like gluing material like lace or mesh. I just don't know where they are. You're doing stuff like this when you're gluing right near the edge, it's really handy to have because they're silicone, so they also help so you can actually spread the glue out as well. Um, obviously, you don't burn your fingers. Okay, so when that's done, I'm just going to slowly bring this in right side out. So now she's got a nice little, uh, whatever, hair wraps like that. Now, as for right now, I'm just going to leave this one. Actually, I'm going to take this off for now, just because I have to figure out where that's going to be sitting. I need it. Well, I, I think I kind of actually do like the idea that it has. It actually gives more of a finished look to it than just plain. I mean, you could do it either way, but I do like having that. So what I think I'm going to do is I do like this. So I'm just going to flip this back kind of partially inside out. And I'm going to flip this one. I'm going to trim some of this extra material off just a little bit. So it's not so thick. And I'm going to just glue this inside right here. bring it back I'm just gonna have to go a little bit I just kind of pulled it crooked when I did that trim this little corner here off Kind of make it look like it was that way. I didn't quite get that lined up the way I thought I was going to have it lined up. Okay, there. Just have to play around with it. Just, just got to add some more glue in this spot here. Move some more glue over on this one here. Just kind of lining up the seams a little bit straighter. I 
need to know she's got her little hat made. I'm just going to grab her back here. I'm just going to move it back on here. Just going to pull it down so the button goes right to this edge. I'm just going to pull all this. And I've got this glued in the wrong spot. I'm just gonna peel this apart. Okay, I'm gonna retry this. Glad I had it right, I guess not. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this back here so her hat will be touching the foam. This, this comes back here. This comes up. Okay, I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this part back here. And bring this around. There. Okay, so I'm going to glue this to here, and I guess I'm not going to worry about this extra little tab. That's just an extra step, and it just, it's just kind of tricky. I'm just not working for. So I'm just going to glue this onto here. And I think I probably could figure it out if I wanted to spend more time, but. Button down in place too. So here's the bath time norm so far. Glue this down. So I'm not gonna glue excuse me. I'm not gonna glue the this part here down until I get her more in the tub. I'm just gonna set her aside to kind of finish trying. I'll do her nose in a minute as well. I'm gonna work on the little pillow. So this has this extra plastic liner in here, which I am going to take out because there's so many layers of this extra liner. Just in my way, all those thin layers of plastic. Cut them off. In the garbage. Okay, so now we've got her little pillow. I'll get it turned back this way. So what I'm going to do is I need to keep this part because that's the little silicone, the little suction cup. But this part, I don't need all this. I just need like about that much. So I am just going to fold this under. Just figure out where it looks nice to make a nice little corner of the pillow. And I'm just going to glue this all down in place. I'm just going to put some glue in here and fold it in back inside. And I'm just going to put a line of glue along here and just glue it down. And I'm not working.
working too much on this because I really got to get the tub spray painted. But there we go. So she's got a nice little bath pillow. I'm just going to get a little more glue in here so it's glued together. And a little bit more glue in this corner here so it's glued together. So we got to have a little bath pillow. So I will be, I think that's about all I can do at the moment. I'll be back when the tub has been uh, painted. Okay, well I'm just out here. I'm just painting my jars and everything. The bathtub is right there. Just figure while I'm out here, I'm just gonna quickly spray paint this other my other jars I was working on. There's those yellow ones. They needed a second or third coat, I guess. other clear jar I got that's got some detailed pattern on it that you can't really see. And I wasn't sure what color I was going to paint it. But I was in the garage and I found this, uh, this one, uh, color is a, what I'm calling them, uh, brilliant blue. So I thought that would give a nice contrast next to the yellow. And it doesn't want to work at the moment. Okay, I'm gonna have to set that aside and just clearing the nozzle. But this is the bathtub I was working on for the gnome. And this color is the ocean mist. I don't really need to worry about getting the inside because the gnome should be inside. Having her little nice little bubble bath. I just need to kind of fix up here because I had it upside down down to paint so it just kind of hide some of the drips okay, that one's done and I had this other jar here and this one I was painting with the modern mint so it just needs another quick coat i probably go with the fourth coat on this one because this color is just so light. Oh, I'm standing next to our fire pit. I'm actually using the fire pit so I don't get anything on the cobblestone. I'm tripping over the sticks that are sitting here. There, that looks good. Let's go See why this one is not spraying. Try again. Just does not want to spray. So I'm just gonna continue painting and I'll be back. I'm doing this one. I couldn't figure out why that blue was not spraying, so I went to the garage and I found this one. It's almost empty of this red. So I said just paint this one red. It's almost empty. I taped off the top of this because I do want to keep part of it clear. But I just wanted to be able to see the pattern. There. I think that red's going to be a really nice contrast beside the yellow and all these these like mint colors. So I'm just going to let all this stuff dry. And like I said, when the, that tub has dried. I've got the feet done and I've got my gnome mostly done so I will be able to assemble everything really soon. Okay, well while I'm out here with my uh, canisters or jars that I was painting and that little tub, I got this little container of this paint 
Uh, one dollar. It says it's marquee flat. It's uh, it's the bear interior exterior little sample color that somebody wanted. It's kind of got this purple tint to it. It's like a chocolate brown with a slight purple tint. And I got these wooden crates that I was using to display. Oops, let me just turn my phone this way so I can record better. Uh, so yeah, I've got these little wooden crates. A set of three. I got them from, I believe, Dollarama. So I've already paid about $2.50, maybe $3 for the set of three. So they do, they are stacking. Like they do like those different sizes. I was using these uh, to hold up all those other wine bottles that I had made to look like crates. So I thought it was cute, but these just blend in with the everything else in my house with them just being that straight color. So I'm just gonna paint them. I'm just painting just the outside. I, for now I'm gonna leave the inside that color because I don't know what I'm gonna do with them right now I'm just not quite sure because I was had bought them I was gonna make a liner for inside the crates so for right now I'm just gonna paint the outside of all of these and like I said always check for the oops paints at your local place wherever you buy paints and supplies I go to uh, Canadian Tire Home Depot and we just got a Lowe's just I think about two years ago now we've had a Lowe's sorry I'm out in my backyard it's kind of a noisy corner right now but yeah so for one dollar to get this little container of the paint is it I don't know the I don't know what color it is I have another one that I also gotten and it's a lighter brown Let's see if I can move the lid over here so you can see on the what I mean by on the lid it looks like it's like a purple tint to it like a chocolate brown with a little bit of a purple tint in there so I don't know if it's really the camera's not really picking up the color sometimes but just thought it was an interesting color so I'm just gonna continue painting these crates this is just an extra little craft I was was gonna be doing I'm out here painting I thought I might as well uh, paint these too. Okay, well here's my crates that I had painted. So there's these three little crates there, the nesting crates. So this is the largest one. For this one, I just painted the bottom and then the two sides, uh, two smaller sides. I love the two larger sides and the inside, the regular unfinished color. And this was the medium one. I actually painted all inside and out. And this is the small one. So for the small one, I just painted the top and bottom for the of the two slatted sides. And I painted completely on the two unslatted sides. And then same for the, the bottom here. I just painted just these end corners where they kind of line up with the ones I had painted. And again, on this one, I left the inside blank. So when they're all stacked up here, you can see that they're, when I stack them all up, they're all different. So they kind of like go together, they're kind of different. I'm just gonna stack these differently so you can kind of see the contrast of the different colors, depending on how I'm gonna use these in my to, in my house to display those jars and those, yeah, those jars I was painting just to give some more height I really like the contrast as I had originally bought these it's just since this is not really part of my craft I'm working on but I had bought these for a Christmas craft because they look like uh, Christmas presents I was gonna wrap them up so these would be like the bases but I never got a chance to do that and like I said, when they were all like this color here and the bottle sitting on top, everything's kind of blended in and you couldn't really see the difference between um, the crates and the bottles. So I just wanted to paint these quickly just to give some height variations. And I just, again, I bought these for one craft. I didn't use them. I'll probably be using these later on in another project. So I didn't want to paint too much. Like I know this larger one, I had another craft project I was going to do with this. I was going to make this like the back part of the truck. 
for this other craft I was going to make. That never happened either. I was going to do for the Easter, you know, it's kind of like a truck with the Easter candy coming out of it. Never had time to do that one either. So I didn't want to paint too much on this one. Again, same with this little mini one. I didn't want to paint too much. I mean, I can always go back and paint it some more, but I, it's so small I didn't want it to be that dark. And just uh, one, one that was completely painted, so I chose painting the middle one completely. So you can see when they all stack in, when they're all stacked in, it, they look like one crate. Uh, but yeah, that's what I've been working on while I was waiting for those other ones to finish painting and drying. So now I will be back in my craft room finishing off that bubble bath gnome. Okay, I'm back in my craft room, but this is just a bonus craft that I was working on. This was that clear jar that you couldn't see the pattern. So all I did was taped, you know, I've got my tape sitting right here, I just took it off. I just taped off the whole top up here. I even put a piece of tape across the top so no paint would get inside. And I peeled off the tape and the way the jar is sitting, it looks like the jar is actually sitting inside something else, like a little, whatever those container sleeves would be called. So to make it really look like it's a little container, I'm gonna cover the bottom of this with some black felt. So this paint here for this red one, it's the Krylon uh, Fusion for Plastics, and this color was red pepper. So I really wanted a nice bright color that would go really good with the, the sunshine yellow that I've got. So I'm just going to set this stuff aside. So I'm going to be doing that in a minute because it's working on little things here or there. But these are the feet for the bathtub so I just have to go grab the bathtub and you can see that it used to be this plasticky kind of a gold now they actually do look like real antique brass feet got all four of them here so what I did for these was it was uh, two coats of the, sorry, look at these. I did two coats of the folk art metallic pure gold and then I went over and did one coat of the deco art splendid gold so a combination of these two to kind of give me that more of that aged brass that I was looking for now the backs of them aren't quite fully finished because they kind of got stuck to my fingers and to the table so I will just put another little coat uh, just on the back of these so I just need to Finish that and get those uh, feet uh, attached back onto the onto the bathtub. And then I'm running out of room to put things. I've got some. My craft room is not very small. I've already outgrown my craft room. But okay, so I'm gonna be bringing my little gnome back here. There she is. She's been drying for quite a few hours now. She's not fully, you know, I don't have her hat part attached onto the bubbles yet. So I'll be working on that in just a few minutes. Okay, so I've got the little bathtub here. It's all painted. I'm just going to put the feet on. I'm just going to turn this down, so it's, this down so you can see what I am doing. screwdriver beside me. I've got a here's the screws. They were here and then I moved them. I just gotta make sure I got all four before I go on. Okay. And then I've got the legs behind me here. Move the paintbrush out of my way. I don't need that now. Just gonna on the legs. I'm just gonna start attaching the feet back on. I'm not 
putting the feet on all the way like tight. I so say you might have to take them off. So, just wanna just wanna make sure I get them all on and center. Just wanna make sure they look good. the four feet. They really do look like antique brass finish to them. My lighting's not very good. I do know that my spray paint kind of dripped and bubbled. It's not the right kind of stuff to loop or to um, use spray paint on. I don't know what kind of plastic this tub is made out of. I don't know what kind of paint it was painted with. All the way now. Let's, I need to get this tub going like this. Now I had the little flowers, table scattered pieces. Again, I don't know where I put them because I want to do some along the sides. They were just here. And then I push things out of my way and then rid of that tape and I push them out of my way and I don't know where they went. Should be sitting right here because I had them. I also put them behind me so I don't see them. So I was gonna glue those little flowers on. I had a handful of them. They were just loose on my desk here. And now I don't see them, so I guess I'll skip that part for a moment. And then I'm going to just get the tub here like this. And I'm going to put my gnome in the tub. Okay, my puppy was barking. I just had to go and see what she was barking about. While I was doing that, I ran and I got some more of these little flowers. They're either beads, because they've got the holes drilled through a couple of the petals, or I guess you can use them as table scatters. I'm going to use them on the side of the tub. Now I've got my little girl gnome just kind of sitting in the tub, kind of looking of all cute and all full of bubbles. I'm just going to fold this down. I kind of want all this bubble stuff to come up, but I just don't want it to come out of the tub. So I'm just going to glue it at the front here so it's in the tub so you can see the edge. But I do want some of it to come over the edge in places. So I will be doing that. Just gonna pull this back out. She's gotta get her centered back in here. So I'm gonna figure out where she is gonna be centered. It's right like that. I'm just gonna set the tub aside because I realized I didn't glue her nose on yet. So I think I'll do that first. I'm just gonna find, I'm just gonna use this little pink bead for her nose. So I'm just going to glue it up here. I'm just gonna pull this hat part off. I've got some glue. I'm just gonna glue right up, just right above. I'm just putting some glue on the um, pool noodle just right above the where the bubbles would be. I'm just going to pull this little claw thing on either side of her nose. I'm just going to hold it there for a second. Just pinching it in place. She got her nose kind of peeking through. I'm just going to go around 
and glue the her little um, this little hat thing. Maybe like her towel, little yeah, her little towel. Just glue that all the way around. At this point, if I can see a little bit of the pool noodle, it doesn't matter because I'm going to be lifting this the little uh, tree skirt that I've got. I'm going to be lifting that up over above the little towel to kind of hide that. Any little mistakes. I'm going to put a little dab of glue to put the, glue the towel on her nose. She's got a cute little button nose. It's hard to see it. I know this angle is not very good at the moment either, but the nose is in there. You can kind of see it. I'm putting my finger on the glue, it went right through the, the tree skirt stuff. There. Can't really see her nose. I'm just going to push this down under like that. Just gonna get her nose to peeking up a little bit more. I'm just gonna set her aside and let that dry. So while I'm doing that, I'm just gonna take the top and I'm just gonna glue some of these flowers on. Just deciding oops, how I would like to place them. So I'm just go like this. Just gonna decide how many I'd like to place. I do like the idea of having a cluster of three and then do one over there. I'll probably use like about four on each side just to start with. Some glue. And just and one of these was stuck to my glue gun. Like that. Three on this side. And I could put one down over here. Like that. And I'll do the same to the other side. Just glue one over here. And I'll glue three over on the other side. There's the one side, and there's the other side. Okay, so now I'm going to grab her and bring her back over here. Let's get some of these glue strands out of my way. Now, I know I did make the little pillow for her. So let's see. gonna attach this in here. So it's got the little suction cup, so I'm just gonna stick the little suction cup right there. And doesn't want to stick, but that's okay. I'll just use some glue. Put a lot of glue in and just stick it right where I want it to stick. The cushion on these little corners here. A little dab of glue there. And push it in. And a little dab on this corner. And we'll push it down. Little bath 
pillow. And I'll grab her back and put her, put her in here now. So I'm grab another glow stick. And I'm just going to start uh, gluing her in place. I'm going to start with this black corner back here. I'm just going to kind of glue this little towel to the inside of the tub just so it kind of covers the edge it's kind of like that unfinished kind of that corner of the bath towel just do it on both sides there. so now her head is glued onto the little bath towel and now I'm just going to start stuffing this tray skirt material in here. And I'm just kind of gluing and stuffing at the same time. I'm just going to pause for a second because i got to get in here and it's going to be hard to see what I'm doing. So when I get her, when I get this all glued back on, I'll come back. I was just playing around. I was just taking some cotton balls and just peeling it apart and just gluing them in random places. And it really looks like she's having a nice fun time in a really foamy bath. So all I did is take some glue, just using up lots of glue, just pulling apart. Uh, so all I was doing was just taking um, cotton balls. As I said, this little tree skirt looked kind of, the way it was just sitting there, it looked like she just had a blanket over top of her. So I was just taking the cotton balls and I was just tearing them up and just gluing them in random places. I just you know, put some glue down. I'm just taking the cotton balls. I'm just pulling them apart in various sizes of chunks and then just sticking them randomly over top of the hot glue. I just really want her nose to be seen. I'm just trying to push this down and around so we can still see her nose. And balls glued to my fingers because I was working on this. Just see anywhere I can see the little bits of hot glue, just sticking more cotton underneath. And I've got this cute little pink rubber ducky. I mean, I know it's the breast cancer awareness one. This cute little pink duck. So I just kind of, just kind of pushed down right about here, just so. The duck kind of sits below the t edge of the duck, so it'll just kind of sit down there a little bit below the edge of the tub, so the duck looks like it's kind of popping out of the bubbles, and that there's the bubbles kind of, you know, around the duck, kind of holding it in place. I'm not going to glue this duck in place because I'm... I don't think it needs to be. I think the cotton balls kind of help hold it in place. And then around the back, I did the same thing. I kind of glued her hat onto the little pillow. And I kind of glued a little bit of the uh, cotton balls just around the edge. Because when you have like, a bubble bath like this, with this amount of bubbles that she's got, it would make sense that the bubbles would be coming out from behind her little pillow here and coming around. I'm just going to fix that because I see I'm just... I'm showing it off, I know you can see I am pulling it apart. So I'm just have to fix that again. And then I think my little gnome is finished. So I'm just gonna stop here for a second and clean up a little bit and you know, fix the back 
here and just get this stuff off my fingers and then I will show a better view of the bath time gnome. Okay, so here's my little gnome. She's all done. She's got a nice bubble bath. So there's the side of the tub with the well, little feet that really look like an antique brass finish. And it's got that minty blue color to the tub. And it looks antique. The little purple or pink little crystal flowers on the side. And of course, there she is. You can barely see her nose just kind of peeking up through there and little pink rubber duck. I think it turned out really good. I just want to say uh, thank you everybody for watching my YouTube channel and watching these videos. Uh, continue watching and subscribing and I will continue making more. Bye!